Perverting Predestination Edward Hume says of Calvin, Predestination was his pivotal dogma. Everything, says Calvin, depends on the mere will of God. If some are damned and others saved, it is because God has created some for death and others for life. Calvin declares, I say with Augustine that the Lord has created those who, as he certainly foreknew, were to go to destruction, and he did so because he so willed. Why he willed, it is not ours to ask. Again, Palmer informs us, the first word Calvinism suggests to most people is predestination, and the other four points of tulip follow. John H. Leith writes, Predestination can be taken as a special mark of Reformed theology. Pink adds, Not only has God the right to do as he wills with the creatures of his own hands, but he exercises this right, and nowhere is that seen more plainly than in his predestining grace. Grace preordains multitudes to eternal doom? Predestination, according to Calvinism, is the eternal decree of God, by which some are preordained to eternal life, others to eternal damnation. Calvin reiterates, Those, therefore, whom God passes by, he reprobates, and that for no other cause but because he is pleased to exclude them from the inheritance which he predestines to his children. It is a libel on the character of God to say that damning billions pleases him. Yet this distasteful doctrine is the inevitable result of Calvinism's extreme view of sovereignty. The Calvinist thrusts his doctrines of election and predestination into every conceivable scripture text. Vance goes on to say, Clark claims that Isaiah has some two dozen verses that bear rather directly on the doctrine of predestination. Yet, the word neither occurs in Isaiah nor anywhere else in the Old Testament. Castanz is even bolder. Turning more specifically to the matter of election to salvation, consider the following. Then follows a list of twelve passages from the Old Testament in which election is not mentioned, and salvation is not even in view. Turning now to the New Testament, we find the same thing. Bertner audaciously declares, There is hardly a chapter in the Gospel of John which does not either mention or imply election or reprobation. But even after a statement like that, he didn't give any verses. In answering the question, I would like for you to list the scriptures which teach that God elected individuals to salvation before the world began. One Sovereign Grace Baptist lists six scriptures where election is not even mentioned.